we have six delay analysis methods under the delay and disruption protocol by Society of Construction Law. And I will not explain the delay analysis methods according to this table because it's a bit harder to understand, especially for beginners or someone who wants to learn more about delay analysis or anything not related to time impact analysis. Some people are familiar with it, but they don't know much about other methods. So I will not use this table. So I prepared this slide so we can use it for explanation in this webinar. And we have two categories of delay analysis methods. The first category is a prospective method. So I am looking forward. I am forecasting the delay. It's a predictive method. So in this case, we have two methods. We have impacted as planned and time impact analysis under the prospective method. So in this case, I will add a fragment, additional activities. The additional activities did not originally exist in the program of work, the original program of work. And I have to do that. So, so I will, for example, if I receive a variation order and after the variation order, I have to submit the material submittal, additional material submittal. I have to wait for 90 more days for a material delivery. Then I can start the relevant construction activity. So in this case, I am adding additional activities to represent the delay. So it is a prospective method. So for example, after I run the program, I found that I have an entitlement of three months. The schedule update does not show three months yet. The project is not delayed by three months, but it will be delayed by three months. So this is, a so I'm forecasting the delay right now. The, the delay did not happen, but I'm forecasting it. So it's like an early alarm for all project parties. And because I'm adding additional activities, another classification of delay analysis methods is the additive model. So for the additive model, as the name implies, so I'm adding at activities. And because also, this is also another description of the delay analysis methods is the model the type. So I am modeling the employer's risk event into the program of work. So I do not deal only with the as-built program. I am adding some activities to help me investigate the delay. So I'm modeling the employer's risk event through additional activities. So it's also a modeled method. The second category is the retrospective method. It is the opposite of the prospective method. And the retrospective analysis, uh, I'm dealing with as built information. I do not forecast, I do not provide an alarm. For one schedule update, for example, I have two months of delay in this particular schedule update. So I'm going through all details inside the program of work, all as built information, and based on a specific procedure. So I have to investigate the delay. So I have to compare uh, as planned versus as actual or as built. So I have to compare the planned duration versus actual duration, planned dates versus actual dates. We have four methods. Out of the four methods, we will go one by one. So I have analytical model. So, uh, so I am analyzing the delays. I do not add or delete any activities in the program of work, but I'm using a specific procedure to analyze the delays as it is, the actual progress, the actual delays. And also it is observational model. So I observe the delay also. For the collapsed as built, it's subtractive. So it's not analytical, it's subtractive because I have to model the event. I have to exactly do what I'm doing here, like in the fragment, but I have, so I, I have to add additional activities, but instead of adding the employer's event, I am actually deleting or removing the or the events caused by the employer. And it is also modeled because I'm, I'm modeling the employer's events.